Yeah. Show it to the camera. Huh? Show it to the camera. We got everything now? Yeah. What are you missing? I would just like to get a highlighter. And that's it? Yeah. Highlighter. Oh, is that powder? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as you just seen by the previous footage there, last night me and Kyle decided to go to Poundland because I decided to do a full face of Poundland makeup. Recently I have been talking and planning a lot of one brand tutorials so I kind of just thought Poundland would be an interesting one. Do you know what? I'm actually so excited for this. I am really, really determined to make this work. I'm not one to go in with the mindset of all of this makeup was a pound. It's gonna be crap, <laughs> but I'm really determined to make this work. But the first thing, obviously, that I searched for was primer. They didn't have a primer, so I'm just going to use one of my own. So this is the MEA Makeup Academy Pro Base Moisturising Primer. And I actually quite like this primer as well because it's like a gel war based primer. It is very hydrating and moisturising and it kind of, once you start blending into the skin, it kind of does break down. It just feels quite nice on the skin. Then for foundation, there wasn't much of a selection of shades. I do have fake tan on at the minute whenever I was selecting a shade. I did keep that in mind, so obviously this is not going to be a shade that matches my face skin colour. It's going to hopefully match my neck. I don't fake tan my face because I just kind of find that I put so much shit on my face on an everyday basis anyway. The last thing my skin needs is fake tan slapped on it. So the shade I got is Cappuccino 6. It was quite hard to select the foundation, I'm not going to lie. But um, I'm going to give this a bit of a fair shot and I'm going to go in with a beauty sponge. I did dampen this last night so it's not too damp and it's not too dry because I do preferably prefer a dry beauty sponge. But I just kind of found that with this beauty sponge it can be a bit too hard whenever it's dry so I'm kind of want to just give it a fair chance so first impressions is it's actually very thick like as you can see <laughs> I just hope that this doesn't like oxidize because I did get obviously as I was saying a shade to match my fake tan um, <laughs> most cheap foundations do oxidize so I'm kind of hoping this doesn't pray unto Jesus it is blending out slightly patchy, it has zero coverage. The only coverage I'm getting is orange. Um, it is not covering my blemishes. I can still see redness coming through. It's definitely darker than I thought. <laughs> what the hell? You would kind of think with it being a, such a thick consistency that it was going to have a bit of coverage. It has coverage, but that's just like the pigment of the foundation. That is awful. Oh my god, oh my god. So I'm just reading the back of it here and it claims to be a natural, long-lasting foundation with a flawless matte finish. It's not necessarily transferring onto my fingers but I can tell that it has dried down pretty quick because as you can see, that's not moving anywhere. <laughs> what the hell? Do you know what? I'm gonna do the forehead for a laugh. We're we're just gonna have a bit of a giggle. <laughs> it's all for shits and giggles until somebody shits themselves. Which it looks as if that's already happened on my face. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god, I look like this really is a moment where I genuinely have no idea what I actually look like right now. 
Okay, so I have came up with the decision that I am not going to keep this on and I'm going to remove it. Hence why I didn't bring it right into my hairline because I'm so blonde at the minute. I don't want an orange hairline. Yeah, I'm going to bring these up close so you can actually... Oh, my sponge just went halfway across my room. So you can actually see the foundation. That is an absolute patchy mess that looks awful. This foundation was a pound. You get what you pay for. But I just don't understand how anybody can actually make this work. The reason I'm going to take this off and apply a different foundation is because my base slash the foundation in my opinion is always like my canvas and my, as I say, base for all of the other products that I apply on top of it. So for example, because my foundation and my base is looking like this, <laughs> anything that I set on top of it, such as my concealer, bronzer, blush, etc., any face products that I set on top of this base that is already messed up and I'm not happy with, it's not going to go well, it's not going to mix well, it's not going to sit well. So that's why I want to give all of these products 100% a fair chance um, to actually make them work for me. And I'm going to apply the MUA Skin Define Matte Perfect Foundation. I did a full face of MUA products and I actually fell in love with this foundation. I do still use it. And again, I'm using this because it is affordable. The problem I'm now having is the fact that this foundation doesn't necessarily match my neck. <laughs> But do you know what? We're just gonna move on. The first concealer that I got is the Natural Coverage Concealer. I did try to get the lightest shade, which is Ivory One, but this is just like a stick concealer, the one that kind of looks like a lipstick. These concealers are, I would say, in my opinion, best for spot concealing, like before you apply your foundation or even after your foundation, but not necessarily to conceal and highlight your under eye areas, your chin, it's actually not as stiff as I was expecting it to be. Obviously the more I am applying it to the skin, like my skin is obviously heating it up and making it become more creamy, but it's not actually as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Oh, I thought I broke there for a minute. I was like, fuck you, Thailand. Oh. Oh! Well that blended out hella easy. That actually looks not too bad. It hasn't highlighted, it hasn't concealed, um, there is not much coverage to it, but it did kind of blend out and I kind of think it blend out that easy that it blend away to nothing actually. I did purchase another concealer which is this wee Define and Conquer Contour Kit, it's just like a wee duo, so I am going to use this to conceal as well, just to see if it adds a wee bit more coverage and kind of highlights my under eyes a wee bit more. I bring it right into the inner corner of the eye just to highlight in there, I also brought it down the centre of the nose as well. So as you can see, that one is definitely blending out so much easier as well. And I can already tell that there's a slight bit of coverage. That has definitely gave my under eye so much more coverage than that previous one. One thing I will say, it's very shiny, like it's very waxy looking. So I would say if you do get oily or if you have oily skin, that this might not be the best for you. Um, I don't necessarily get oily my under eyes. But my under eyes do look oily, not in a bad way, kind of like in a healthy way because I do have like dry to normal skin, not really mad at it, I'm still gonna say it, but yeah, it's actually blended out really really nice, it definitely has coverage, it's kind of highlighted the tiniest bit, not too sure if you can see or not. So that's it all blended out, it isn't a severe highlight underneath my eyes and like my chin and area, it's just kind of like a soft highlight, it looks actually quite nice. And the coverage of it is quite soft, like it doesn't look cakey in person. Then to set everything in place, I got a setting powder. And this is the Smoothly Does It Pressed Powder. And this is in the shade Sand 4. This was the lightest shade I could get. So I was pretty bummed about that because I have heard quite a lot of people talking about um, these wee powders in terms of how good they actually are because they are only a pound and they just kind of do the job. So I'm just going to use this to set my outer perimeter of my face because this is going to be too dark to set my under eyes. Oh yep 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 yep. <laughs> this is a this is pigmented. 
<laughs> it's actually coming off darker on my face than it actually is in the pan. It's actually quite a nice wee powder. It's definitely set. My face no longer feels like sticky or tacky. I definitely must look out for the lighter shades of this just to try. Now that everything is set in place, we're going to move on to highlighter. So as you've seen by the footage, shit was nearly about to hit the fan <laughs> because there was no highlighter. There was a cream highlighter, but I just, that's not really my thing. So eventually I did find a powder highlight. So this is their triple bet highlighter. And it just comes in this wee box, which I kind of thought was quite cute. It's Poundlands, if you're just starting off at makeup, if you're a child, if you're like four. <laughs> so I'm probably just going to go for this colour here because it is lighter. Although because I am quite tanned at the minute, I might go for... Do you know what? I'm going to mix the two of them. Um, so as you can see, this is the lighter one and that's kind of like a more champagne gold. So I'm going to mix the two. But yeah, like it is nice, it is subtle, but as you can see, I am building it up to see how it actually builds up and see if I can get it as tense as I can. So moving on to a blush next, and this is the Filling Blush Blusher. <laughs> and this is in the shade Candy Floss 2. So this is a super soft blush powder with vitamin E. These blushers look actually really, really nice. I was really stuck on what shade to actually get because they just looked all quite nice. There's a hair on my mouth. <laughs> um, yeah, so what was I talking about? What was I talking about there? <laughs> but the shade, um, I know it's called Candy Floss, but it doesn't really look like a Candy Floss pink shade. It's kind of like a terracotta rose, which is actually quite nice. I just kind of find that this would be very compliment on the skin. There we go. I'm starting to see a wee bit of colour now. That's quite nice, actually. I really, really like the colour. It's actually sitting on top of the highlighter, the setting powder, the foundation. That is mine. <laughs> um, fine actually, and I forgot to mention that so is the highlight. Then I'm just going to go in and bronze the skin. So this is the Good To Glow Matte Bronzer, and this is in the shade Matte Light 1. I kind of wanted to play it safe and go for the lightest shade of bronzer. That's one thing I will say to point out, the bronzers were quite dark. So if you do have like a darker skin tone, I actually thought that was quite fab actually. I have this one and then obviously as I used at the start of the video, this wee contour kit duo. I'm not too sure if there's much difference between these two. Looking at them in person, this what this one is more cool toned, so therefore it would be best to use as a contour. Um, I don't necessarily like to contour because I just don't feel like I need to. It's just another step in my makeup routine that I just don't feel like I need to do. Bronzer just does the job for me, so I'm just going to stick to my normal routine. I'm going to use my usual brooking ratchet ass brush. <laughs> it seems to be blending out quite nice. The colour is actually quite perfect, actually. It's not too intense. It is pigmented, but it's not too pigmented. So that's the bronzer and the blush and the highlight up close. That's actually really, really nice. Perfect. So I would just switch it up and go for lips next. So one thing my stupid ass forgot to get was a red lip liner because I wanted to go for a red lipstick today because I've seen this and it just looks really, really nice. So I actually ended up purchasing two liquid lips. Obviously the red one, which is in the shade Sherry, Sherry, Cherry Pop 3. And then I got a nude, which is in the shade Latte 2. So that's the red one swatch there. As you can see, they are very, very pigmented. Even with the nude shade, like they're not even patchy. They actually remind me of the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams, the ones that are actually in the packaging like this. Oh, oh, ah. So I'm gonna go over with another layer and see how it builds up. Okay, so that's it with about <laughs> three layers. <laughs> that's it with about three layers. And you know what? That is stunning. That is so nice. The only problem I'm having with it is the fact that it's not drying down. Oh, I swear to God, this big ring is that big that it's like, <laughs> oh, I touched it. <laughs> 
I swear to God, I'm like a bull. It's not drying down completely matte, but do you know what? I'm not mad at it. That means it's going to be really comfortable. Oh my God, yeah. A lot of transfer from it, so you're going to have to be a wee bit careful with it. For a lipstick that is a pound, that is honestly beautiful. Next up, we have eyebrows and eye shadow. Um, what the fuck, what the fuck was that noise? <laughs> I am such a freak. This is probably the worst thing about doing these tutorials is the eyebrows for me. Um, yeah. So I did get this wee kit. It obviously has three powder shades and then it has a highlighting shade. Just going to use the medium brown shade. This is so hard. Do you know what? It's actually not bad. Like, I can't really say much about it. There wasn't many eyeshadows. There was just these, like, wee duos. There was, like, a green one, a purple one. Like, these really rare colours that I just wouldn't wear um, or use. So this is their eyeshadow duo in the shade Nutmeg 2. Um, I'm not too sure what eye look I'm going to create with these two shades. I'm not going to be doing anything spectacular clearly. So I'm going to take a bit of the powder shade from the contour kit. I'm going to use that as my transition. So I'm just going to take that just on a dirty Kylie Jenner brush and clean it off on myself. Here we go. So I'm just going to go into the actual eyeshadow now <laughs> and I'm going to use this darker shade just on a smaller blending brush and I'm going to place this in the crease. Whoa. Well, we definitely have pigment there. Just going to go back into that first brush again. So this wee eyeliner obviously was a pound. It doesn't claim to be matte or anything like that. So it should be quite interesting. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh hell yes. It is a brush. No way. I really have high hopes for this eyeliner now because I was expecting that to be a foam tip. That is so hard. I'm not going to do anything too crazy, I think that will just do it. I really like that. Oh wow. Poundland eyeliner. So uh, this is the Turn Up The Volume and Define Mascara and this is obviously in the shade Black 2. Actually not a bad mascara, it's definitely lengthened, it's made my lashes look thicker, but if you're somebody that is just going to put on a pair of false lashes after, that doesn't look too bad. Not mad at all. So next up I got eyelashes and I got the Fern McCann eyelashes and these are in the style Paris vibe. Doesn't look as if I'm wearing a full face of Pineland makeup. Nah, it doesn't. <laughs> That's crazy. Obviously, keep in mind if I had have kept the foundation on, my face right now would have looked like a hot mess. Absolutely disgusting, let's just say. Um, but all of the products combined together, layering on top of each other, has been absolutely perfect. I've had no problems. My face literally doesn't look any different now compared to if I was just going in with my usual day to day products. So, the foundation. 
that. I don't even need to say anything about that foundation. The We Stick Concealer, it was okay. It kind of blended out that well that it blends out to nothing. It was very, very sheer. It didn't have any coverage at all. As I was saying, whenever I was applying this, I do believe that these concealers are best to use before you apply your foundation to hide blemishes and spots um, and then go on with your foundation. I just kind of don't find that they do or make much difference whenever they are applied on top of their foundation. Taking the two concealers into consideration at the fact that, that they both didn't lift my underlying foundation. Usually that can happen with cheaper concealers. I know the Morphe concealer lift it. I'm surprised that shit didn't lift my skin. That's how much it lifted the foundation that was underlying the concealer. The setting powder it was pigmented. It did do its job. It did set my skin. It hasn't overly oxidized or anything. I will definitely, definitely use this in the future. It was a very nice powder and I will go out and try to find the lighter shades to use as like an under eye setting powder. Same goes with all of the face products such as the bronzer, the blush and the highlighter. They all blend out absolutely perfect. They blend it out on top of each other perfect for a pound. I am going to go back and actually buy another one of these. That's all I'm saying. The mascara, meh. The eyeliner, <laughs> well kiss my ass. This was really really good. The brush I was absolutely surprised about. I will 100% be using this eyeliner again. I have nothing bad to say about it at all. The wee eyeshadow duos were perfect, they were fine, they blended, they were pigmented. Can't really say too much about them because the shades are very meh. Um, so yeah, I'll probably, maybe not, I'm not too sure, use them again in the future or whatever, but yeah. For a point, they're worth the money. The eyelashes were fine. I'm really, really surprised and I'm really, really happy that this did work out. I honestly am so, so happy. You just, whenever it comes to really affordable makeup like this, and especially with Poundland makeup, you never know what you're going to get. Obviously, you're going in with lower expectations and you're not really expecting the best. And if I am being honest, that's what I was kind of going in with. Um, but I was also 100% going to try my hardest to make all the products work, which I think I did. I think I gave everything a fair shot. Apart from the foundation, that doesn't even deserve to be put in the bin. That deserves to be burned and crucified and hung up somewhere. I'm honestly absolutely loving my makeup today. I don't have to take it off to go out tonight. I'm really, really impressed. I might change the eyelashes though because they're a wee bit... No, I won't change the eyelashes. I'm just starting to pick at things because everything seems to be perfect. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Don't forget to follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. They'll all be linked and listed down below. And I hope to see you all in my next one.